studios inside the Lawrenceville School's historic Pop Hall. I'm Maggie Blunden, and this is L10 News. In my last episode as anchor, before I pass the reins to Naima Ford, I'd like to thank you all for letting me share Lawrenceville stories with you this past year. And now for this spring's campus happenings. To kick off this week's show, we'd like to first congratulate Lawrenceville's class of 2024 valedictorian, Aurelian, and faculty speakers. Emily Pan, Claire Jang, Gordon Gruber, and Miss Jennifer Parnell. We look forward to hearing their speeches as they leave their mark on Lawrenceville. Big changes are coming to Lawrenceville next year with the implementation of the new daily schedule. We spoke to Dean of Academics, Bernadette Teeley, to answer student questions and gain more insight into the plans. Hi, I'm Celine, and today I'm here with Dean Teeley, who is the Dean of Academics. So the way that the new schedule came about is that about two years ago, we had a discussion about pace of life on campus. Faculty, students, um, coaches were all acknowledging that the number of classes that students were preparing for and the pace of our weekly schedule was somewhat unsustainable. Next year, what we're looking at is uh, a two-day rotation, so what we would call a black day and a red day, naturally. Uh, <laughs> the black day ha being A, B, and C, the red day being e, uh, D, E, and F, and we'd just alternate. So Monday would be a black day, Tuesday would be a red day. The other advantage to having the alternating days is that no class meets back-to-back. -back. So if you have A period history, and you have a big assignment, it's not due the next day. Nothing would ever be due the next day. It would be due in two days. Mm -hmm. So that gives you time to meet with the teachers for consultation. If you have an away meet or you have a match off campus, your homework does not need to be done on that first night. You basically have two nights to complete any one night assignment. I'm hopeful that that balances out um, the evening time for students as well. Yeah, it definitely gives, I think it gives a lot more time um, for students to like manage their work and be able to like dabble in things that they're passionate about like their interests mm -hmm. but i think there's one there's one big student concern which mm -hmm. is that like a longer class period requires a lot of attention span mm -hmm. and how what what would you say for those concerns yeah well, i would say that your attention span really doesn't change whether the class is 40 minutes or 90 minutes <laughs> if your attention span is seven minutes it's seven minutes you know and yeah um if your attention span is 17 minutes, mm -hmm. about your age, um, in a 45 minute block, you'd have basically three periods where you're really paying attention. In a 90 minute block, you have more. So good curriculum design actually is the same for a 90 minute block versus a 50 minute block in that you need uh, faculty and educators need to have um, activities and have different engaging um, modules within that class to allow students to be engaged. Please do not envision a 90-minute Harkness discussion. Nobody wants that. <laughs> and it's not particularly productive. I think another student concern would be that classes like language and math require mm -hmm. a lot of consistent repetition, especially mm -hmm. if you're learning a new language. You have to um, practice like every single day for a shorter period of time rather than absorbing like a lot of new information mm -hmm. in one go and then not meeting again for another one or two days. So what yeah. would you say about that? Yeah, well that's definitely something that um, Dr. Jacobs and the language department is is working on. But in theory, if your class meets every other day and you have a home and you have homework, you are touching that class every day. So Monday the class meets, Tuesday you're doing your homework for Wednesday, Wednesday you're in class. So because the classes start earlier and they're going to be longer, students are concerned about getting less sleep. So what would you say about this? Mm -hmm. I do appreciate that. And I would say that right now, if you're a senior and you have um, a lab block, right? So Monday starts at 8, your doubles are going to start at 8.45. So we're hovering around that time. I think what we are changing is the Wednesday. So Wednesday right now is a sleep in for students and we are, you know, that is not being carried over fully into next year. And so um, our Saturdays, we have those two weeks per term, which will have Saturday classes. We have two or three weeks per term, which are closed weekends. And those are going to be weekends like Hill Weekend or um, House Olympics, where there's so much going on on campus. We just want you to be here. So there's a little bit of sleep in, built in there where you don't have a Saturday class, but you're on campus. I think that brings me to my last question, which is what are weekends at Lawrenceville going to look like mm -hmm. with the closed weekends and limited Saturday classes? 
I, what I would hope to see, and I, and I say hope because at the end of the day, the community that we have on campus is created by the students. The administrators, yeah. the faculty can put things in motion, but unless it's embraced by the student leadership, it's gonna fall flat. Um, and so what I would love to see is joy, and I'd love to see some collaboration. And that just requires the student body to stand up and say, this is what we want our weekends to look like. We want these to be showcases. We want the events to be fun. We want to be cheering for our, t our, um, our housemates and teammates and friends in their competitions. Thank you so much, Dean Teeley, for providing further clarification on next year's schedule, and I look forward to seeing its implementation. Thank, Thank you, Celine. You. Thanks to Celine, Ray, and Sophie for the interview. From academics to athletics, we turn our attention now to one of Lawrenceville's most extraordinary athletes, Sophia Swindell. The fourth former has been on a tear, breaking records and turning heads both on campus and internationally. While competitors are finding it nearly impossible to catch Sophia, we did. I'm Jackie Williams from L10, and I'm here with Lawrenceville's trending track star, Sophia Swindell. So, Sophia, which events do you do for the Lawrenceville track team? I run the 200, 100 hurdles, and I triple jump, and I'm also in a lot of the relays. And which records have you broken for all of those groups? Um, I have the indoor and outdoor 200. I have all the hurdles records except 400 hurdles, but maybe I'll get that this spring. And then I have the triple jump records. And would you say that your most recent records that you've broken hold any more weight over the past ones, or is it just like pretty much business as usual? <laughs> Um, I think the 200 record that I just broke indoor um, is definitely my favorite because it was also the NJ State record. So that was kind of a big deal for me. And it was also my first time uh, going under 24 seconds. Um, so it was it was a great moment. Yeah, that sounds really great. And I think a lot of people are wondering, like, sort of what goes through your mind while you're running and what goes through your mind when you like cross the finish line and win a race. Um, well, it definitely depends on the event, but for the 200, for example, I'm thinking about like getting out hard and then like slingshotting off the turn and then just really holding on. Um, and then after a win, it's really just like relief. Like I'm, I'm happy. And if I ran it, if I feel like I ran it well, then I'm excited to see my time. Yeah, that must be a great feeling. And I know you've probably been running track for a while. Like how did it used to be when you were a little girl? Like were you faster than a lot of the other people or like did it take a lot of work to kind of be one of the faster runners? Um, I was always pretty fast. Um, when I got to high school, like freshman year, uh, there was definitely more competition and I wasn't like winning every race or anything. I think last year was really a breakthrough year. Um, I got a lot better, so then I was winning a lot more. Yeah, obviously it's showing <laughs> through all the records. And I guess if you've been running for a while, what's sort of been your drive that's been keeping you in the sport for so long? Uh, well, I think it's a very rewarding sport. Like, as I said, every time I cross the finish line, it's relief and a lot of times just like pure joy. Um, and those moments are just really special. And that's why I keep doing it. Has there been any like challenges that you've had to overcome in the sport? Uh, yeah, like every meet, every race, I'm pretty nervous beforehand. And like, especially at bigger meets. And I think a challenge is um, something I need to work on definitely is like executing at bigger meets because sometimes I like I'm I don't want to get the nerves don't, I don't want to let the nerves get to me um, so just staying focused in those moments definitely something I want to work on. Do you have any other tips like that for other track athletes? Uh, I feel like to run track you really need to love the sport because um, it takes it takes a lot of work it's sometimes painful. Um, so I feel like find things that you love about the sport, so then it'll motivate you to work harder. What are some of the things that you love about the sport and what are like the coolest thing you've, things that you've been exposed to while competing? Uh, I really love the team. Um, like I said, I love the rewarding moments and it's just been a great experience, like, uh, doing international competitions too, because you get to meet like all types of people and it's, it's fun, like meeting people at meets. Yeah, and how does the Lawrenceville track community and coaches sort of support your journey, and how is that overall environment? I really love the team. Like, a lot of them have become some of my closest friends. So, like, every time at practice, we're working hard, but we're also having a lot of fun. Um, so I really enjoy it. And it's very supportive. Like, everybody's just building each other up, and it's, it's really helpful. It's a great environment to compete in. Do you have any a singular favorite memory from your whole track experience, whether it's at Lawrenceville or before that? 
There have been a, a lot of good moments, but one of my favorites is last summer at AAU National Championships. Uh, I won 100 hurdles, and um, I wasn't competing for Lawrenceville, so I had a different team, and everybody was, like, calling me champ, like, leading up to the race before I'd even won it and really hyping me up, so I really wanted to win that race. And it was the first time I'd, like, won anything kind of big, so it was just, um, it was a great moment. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Um, and what are your goals for this upcoming season? A big goal of mine is to be NJ Gatorade Player of the Year because it goes to one person from each state. So it's kind of saying, like, you're the best in the state for that season. So it's pretty prestigious and hard to get. And then in terms of, like, um, events specific, like, I definitely want to go below 14 seconds in hurdles and then just, like, focus on the little details to get better in every event. Well, all of Lawrenceville is rooting for you to be NJ Gatorade Player of the Year, and we'll all be rooting for you to succeed and break more records this season. So thank you, Sophia. Thank you. Back to you, Maggie. Thank you, sports producers Jackie and Brian, for the story. More news. While we have already seen their passion for professional sports through their podcast, Two Brothers and Their Sports, fourth former Arav Parekh and his brother Arsh, a sophomore at Hun, have moved into print. Their new book, A Blueprint to Winning, Advice from the Pros on How to Overcome Adversity, is now available. Shout out to the Parekh brothers for their hard work. Moving from achievements in sports to science, third former Annabelle Yao was recently named second runner-up in the senior division category for her research on Alzheimer's disease at the Mercer Science and Engineering Fair. We wish her luck on future endeavors with this important research. That's it for this week's episode. As always, if you have a story to share, let us know or stop by our office in the basement of Pop Hall. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode. From all of us here at L10, thanks for watching and enjoy the spring weather. Bye everyone.